Five. Howdy guys, welcome back, Jed Scott here, and Dad's outside fumbling around doing some things, getting ready, because today is a glorious day that I've been waiting for for like three or four weeks. Been putting it off weekend after weekend, waiting for the right weekend, and this is the weekend. This is the Sunday. We're gonna finally do it. And what are we doing? The Strange Dane of 60 install. It's finally time. So, yeah, no driving video for Jezebel for a while because we'll have to get a new drive she have made. So, just going to pan over some of the parts I just picked up. <laughs> and uh, that's the sound of progress coming around the corner. We got Jezebel moved over here. The plan here, pick up the butt like we always do. Take, drop the rear end out, roll it out, roll the new one in put on our new QA1 rear shocks and we could finally find out if three inches narrower than stock was a good idea or if it was a shitty idea but regardless we're gonna get at it a lot of speed footage in this one more than likely so taking the rear end out and swapping it ain't no big deal it's pretty simple so hope you enjoy and see you later Drive shaft out. Dad's taping up because that's his drive shaft now. So got the uh, transmission plugged up so we don't lose any fluid. Now we're gonna knock these leaf springs off, shocks off, disconnect the brakes, rear end roll out, and other you know fun crap. So let's get at her. Okay, progress update. So brake lines disconnected, shocks are disconnected, drive shaft obviously out. Ah. Uh, yeah, leaf spring disconnected in the back. Yeah. You're laying on all the wrenches. I was laying on all the wrenches. Dad wanted me to say that. Uh, e brake cables are off, and every time we needed a wrench, apparently I was laying on it, but in actuality, it was underneath Dad. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> progress is progress, and progress is good. So, uh, we're going to probably take the front shock hangers actually off. I think with the we can leave the zoomies on and actually access them and we're just going to try and get it where we can literally just roll this rear end out take everything off this we need transfer it to the strange rear end roll the strange rear end in wham blam thank you ma'am we're done hopefully so i gotta show you guys something you know i would love to claim that i had this whole thing planned out from the get-go with the zoomies but i did not so these are your four bolts that hold your leaf spring hanger on. This is from the front side. As you can see, there's the wheel or the tire and the zoomy. You can actually get to all four of them with no problem. However, they are really tight, so the Ed's half inch drive uh, Earthquake XT. Easy work. My dumb ass was going to do it the hard way, but I kept grabbing the wrong socket. Start off with 916 short, then I need a longer extension. Then I came out here and it was perfect. Then I had to go get uh, a deep well and I grabbed a half inch. So that guy, easy work of it. So literally now, I think this rear end should literally just roll out of here. Raise the car up, should just roll right on out and uh, enjoy. Mr. Scott, raise that charger. There it is. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. That's how we do it. Probably how they did it in the factory. Probably. So, 
Now we gotta get the strange rear end out. Michael showed up. And uh whatnot. Well I need to get them shocks out first, so alrighty, so all right, part of the rear end upgrade is we're getting rid of these piles of junk. Never buy this crap, regardless of how cheap it is. That's a sign of it hitting the ground behind me. Um, spend the extra money. We got single adjustables. These are already on the front. Um, yeah, these competition engineerings, they are literally, well, they're going back. They're absolute garbage. They're already blown out. They're no good. We got the QA1s. We're going to go ahead and install these. And uh, hopefully these are actually decent. What do you say about them, Dad? Well, at least a little easier. It looks like it's easier to adjust them. Yeah. And instead of having to push them all the way up, you know, take them off, push them all the way up, and you got three clicks, you have to hope you get right. And these, you know, you got a little knobby. I like it's a little knob. They're very expensive. I don't think any shocks worth a hundred dollars or more, but uh, hopefully, you know, these are decent. So bring these adjusted, get them installed on the car already, and then we'll get the strange rear end out and right in the car. Really? All right, so the QA1s are in. That was fun. Got all the bushing set right. Don't mind that one. Michael, what do you say about the QA1s? They're shiny. They are shiny. So, we're gonna get everything swapped over to the, from the new rear end, and the old one, and yada, 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 and get to work. And this tripod is very awkward, because the legs are fully extended. <laughs> so. Let's get to work. Well, there's a strange rear end. And here's the original 1968 Dana that's been rocking around that we were built. So, we gotta take everything off this thing, put it on that one. So, let's get at her. New plan? New plan. New plan. We're gonna stick this one in there, then we're gonna stick that one right behind it so you have tandem axle charger. Ooh. Okay, I can I can get with that. New no plan. Tandem axle. Tandem axle charger. Oh, right, we can uh, you know, we can drop one set of axles, you know, pick it up, drop it like a big old dump truck. Yeah. This is drag racing, and then you just pick up that yeah. back when we want to go drag racing. Yeah. Okay. Like airbag. Yeah. Put some airbags on it. Airbags are kind of gay, but I guess it would work. Seem more hydraulic, you know. That way we can just like go down to straight and just pop up like one of them ghetto cruiser things. Put an air on. Yeah. No, I was thinking hydraulic. Oh hydraulic. Yeah, because air is retarded. You don't rely on that. Yeah. By the way, anybody's gonna freak out about destroying this bumper, we're replacing it. I have like ten charger bumpers. That, we're not bending that at all. We should have been looking Actually, uh we have bent it. We've made it nicer. Really? It we've closed the gap a little bit right here. Oh and we actually I don't know how that came apart. It's okay. This one's never fit where the dam because the one one of the few pieces that was original to Jezebel was this quarter panel extension, and someone needed that quarter panel extension to finish his car so it'd get painted. I wonder who that was. So I had to buy this piece of shit off eBay that's got like no mounting tabs. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder who got my one good piece. That can't be yours, because mine's orange. Well, you want me to go get some sandpaper? I'll show the blue paint underneath of it. It's R4 red. It's blue underneath that. I know it is. <laughs> okay. We got rear end swapping parts to do. Back to this. Still got to move all the brake crap over, make new brake lines and stuff. 
But uh, the strange is in. Give me one shocks your in. Thanks, Dad. Pissed me off. Had to go take a break. Because, uh, yeah. I ain't going to get into it. We just got to tighten up the leaf springs in the back on the shackles, which are set at the lowest point the car will sit. It looks like everything ought to, you know, clear pretty good. It's definitely narrower. That's for sure. That's for sure. So we get those tightened up and uh, we should be golden. No. Oh. Well, let it down first, then tighten it. Yeah, we'll tighten it once it's kind of settled. What we're doing is letting everything settle, the suspension. Up and down, up and down, it's gonna let everything find its own place. We've done this a couple different times before we did the U-bolts and the front spring hanger. So, we're just letting everything find its own true center. Looks pretty good from here. Wheel looks pretty damn center in the wheel well. Oh, there it is. Strange Dana 60, I ain't got no complaints about it. It's a great rear end. Now I just gotta drop another $500 to get a new fucking drive shaft, so yay. Uh, as, far as, I'm ha as far as I'm concerned with how I feel about this car, I'm done working on this car. I'm sorry, guys, I'm fucking done. Uh, new super stock springs. Uh, wheels tucked up in quite a bit. Like literally. But leaf springs hitting. The tire, of course, once we get the uh yeah, look at this. Nice road rash developed yesterday from the stupid car show. But uh leaf springs rubbing the inside of the tire. Figured that was gonna happen, but none of the brakes are on. That should space it out enough to clear that. But uh yeah, I'm pretty much done working on this car, so hope you got your fill of Jezebel videos because I think I'm done working on this car until next year. Oh, Jezbo, just don't bring me the fucking joy that the dart does or anything else. And there's another problem. Driver's side is still sitting higher than the passenger side. And the springs are on the right side. I can't remember if that's 455 or that's 454, but I looked it up three different times. The springs are on the right side. And I know we're sitting on this patio, but it don't matter. You can still kind of, you can just basically tell that's higher than that. That's the exact opposite of what it should be. So yeah. <sighs> Welcome back guys. I honestly, I don't remember the last time I had this camera out, but uh, just been enjoying myself a little bit. Been spending a lot of money on stupid things that you'll find out at some point, hopefully. Maybe, maybe I got scammed, I don't know. But anyways, so, uh, we left off with the debacle on Jezebel. Of our rear end being a little too narrow. And, uh, well, figured it out. So once the backing plates and drum, <clears throat> once the backing plates and drums are on, it's actually going to space the wheel out quite a bit, so... And we need to put our rear drums on anyways and why i didn't go disc because i don't like four-wheel disc driven old muscle cars with four-wheel disc brakes i hate it just hate it another thing we got to do is we got stock loose spring shackles that'll lower the back of the car down a little bit we got all brand new brake stuff in fact here's our new drums from only place to get these things from was classic industries and of course they took forever to get here i mean literally forever those people with shipping they suck they really do suck as far as when it comes down to shipping. They charge you out the ass for shipping, and then it still takes like two weeks to get something. So, but as you can see, it's not even that nice of parts, and they were kind of expensive. But the only people to get them through right now, Rock Auto doesn't have the spin brake drums, and well, I just order everything from the same place. So, new shoes, a uh, new splitter block for the rear end. Uh, hopefully this doesn't leak because these things are notorious the reproductions for leaking all new springs hardware foam gaskets everything we need so i'm gonna get at her i might film speedy footage on one side and uh whatnot but let's get her done see how this looks 
I hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far, or at least enjoyed something. So <laughs> I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so we're looking at the strange Dana 60 rear end. This is the flange. Look inside there. Can't see crap. But check out this axle. So, this is the difference between stock Chrysler and strange engineering. So, hang on. So, as you can see, this baby is solid. This is 35 spline versus my old 23 spline now. I still say this is plenty strong. This axle would hold up to anything I could put at it. But there's the difference. You see how this tapers down? This bay belly, this bad boy, just the splines are a little bit bigger and the axle's just solid meat. But they both got green bearings on them. The only thing I'm gonna say, so against Strange, see on the Chrysler end here, these studs are pressed in and they stay in place. Of course, we got a little sauce coming out of there, but that's just assembly stuff. The rear end is still pretty fresh. The strange stuff, oh, it'll come right out. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, but I mean, they self tighten, they self lock on the axle so they don't turn on you. But when you are loosening them, if you push, that'll get like that and I'll start turning, but it will stay in place. But yeah. There's the difference. Now let's get these old crappy looking bagging plates put on because we're not going to clean them. We're just going to slap them on. Luckily everything's coming apart pretty easily so it's going to be a good day. Talked with Strange Engineering. They say to reuse these, they're really strong. They use them on the unbreakable rear end. So 35 foot pounds of torque spec. So they're gonna get torqued down. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace these uh, shoes and keep rocking and rolling. be putting all the new brake stuff on it's not time because well, we got it on the line and everything else and i'm like the dad he's a little more educated on setting up the self-adjusting stuff because he learned it from our friend william at charger 33 mopar go check out his channel he's got a wicked 68 ratty black charger and he just put some really sweet wheels on his car changed the look of it entirely looks badass but check him out Let's get the other side done and see if our wheels fit down. guys so we're working on the rear end trying to lower it down make it a little more livable so one shackle is off and these are dad's original shackles from Chrysler off his 68 and so as you see we had this thing we used to have to run it out here oh sorry about that I had it still on widescreen but we used to have to run it in the bottom hole because the old worn out leaf springs we went to the super stock springs we ran here and then when they kind of wore out we went to here on one side but this is what we're going to be gaining as far as shortening the everything to travel and this is what we should have you shouldn't really run these or air shocks ever to raise back the car but you do what you got to do so i'm gonna get these babies put on and see how they help and then we'll have a reveal of how everything's looking wish me luck that it all works good it's not looking good right now but hopefully it gets better oh there she sits guys i'm more than done with it i wasn't happy with the first time we got this rear end in here 
it ain't the rear end's fault just tired of working on this thing there's no reward no gains no nothing with this card i'm just sick of working on it so this is probably gonna be the last you see of her for a long time so here's the problem and i don't even want to hear people's false solutions because there's no solving this besides lee springs and the fact that the car might be tweaked so as you can see how this leaf spring is sitting it's slightly cocked over we've had the u-bolts loose we had the front shackle mount loose let it find its own center and this is where it likes to lie no matter what happens so here's the other conundrum so as you can see with no leaf with no shackle that's how it sits a lot of daddies over there hey. and so when you're mounting your leaf springs on your car there's three positions your shackle will sit. It'll either sit vertical, kick to the back, or kick forward. And in my direct connection drag racing book, my chassis book, kick to the back is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to sit like this. You can have them sitting straight up and down, but if they sit forward, that's a no-no. You can't, that just doesn't, I don't know why it don't work, but they say do not run them like that. Something with the spring bottoming out. And... Uh, where is it? Well, anyways, I had this car jacked up a little bit ago, and I was trying to fit these things in, which, by the way, these sleeves here do not want to fit over those rubber bushings that go in those springs, but those are the correct bushings, so I don't even want to hear that, and I tried greasing them. I actually beat the shit out of one and had to fix it because I bent it, and, yeah, I bent that. So, um... So this is a no-go, can't put those on. And uh, well, as the car sits right now, it's sitting on the leaf spring and it's still sitting pretty high. On this side, which is the side it's supposed to be sitting lower on. And this is the side it's supposed to be sitting higher on. And well, yeah. <clears throat> so there's pretty much well, just no fix in it. I'm done with it. That car can sit. Just tired of spending money on it youtube don't pay that much and the money i've wasted trying to put this car together this year it ain't adding up and i know it ain't about the money youtube pays me and everything but by god sometimes you just gotta call it quits and stop wasting money on a project move on to something else like my dart or my baby hemi or just put the camera down you know so Hope you guys enjoyed this because this is the last time you're probably going to see Jezebel for a minute. Unless a miracle happens and this car magically fixes itself. Because I'm just tired of wasting time on it. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later. By the way, tires clear now in every aspect. Not much, but they do clear. Can't really see it now, but that's the inner wheel lip and the tire. It all clears now. Not by much, but just enough. But to show you how honest I am about being done with Jezebel, there it is. By the way, if you need a really nice car cover, Jags, they sell really nice car covers. They really do. This is one of their premium units. It's got kind of the soft inside. They don't scratch your paint or your patina, depending on who you are. So there she is. Till next year, good night.